All right, let's start talking about the paraphernalia that comes from the Brave Sun game system. We took a look at the starships. They were fantastic, but Brave Sun is more than just starships. It is a whole game, and the game kind of feels like an easier, simpler version of something like Star Wars Armada or other games like that. And I think you'll see why as we go through it. Real quick, we're going to throw the, go through the classes, and the classes are fairly easy to identify based on the uh, stance or the bases. Okay, so first, this is a Dreadnought base. The Dreadnought base, and I think the way that uh, Blitz Gaming uh, talked about it was uh, if the more complex the class symbol, uh, the that that is basically the difference in how you can tell what is uh, what ship is what class. So the dreadnoughts have a star with a circle on them. Okay, and you look at cruisers. Cruisers have just a star. So that lends into the idea that the star with circles more complex than just the star. So that's how you can tell the difference in scaling or in difference in uh, in classes. Now you look at the. Uh, frigate base, and the frigate base is just a diamond, okay? And that's not, actually don't pay attention to that, pay attention to that one, that diamond right there. Uh, and we'll go go into what the, the modifiers next to the arcs mean in a second. Then the fighter, it's triangle. So you can see it, the, the, basically the pointy shape gets more, <laughs> more, um, complex the more the bigger the ship goes so if you look at the rule book which by the way the rule book is i looked uh, in between shooting these uh, the rule book is available for a dollar on um the brave sun page on my mini factory uh and it has the rules for the game in there it has the uh, basically the breakdown of the ship so we're going to take a look at this guy right here and you have the attack arc uh, it says the attack arc, the angle at which the ship can attack or counterattack. The number inside the square indicates how many dice are rolled when attacking. The minus symbol indicates a negative minor, uh, uh, modifier, which there is not a minus on this. So I'm reading from the book. Uh, the minus symbol indicates a, a, a negative modifier. So the admiral controlling the ship must reduce the value of one of the dice rolled by one. Uh, more on this in the combat section. We already talked about the category, which is denoted by the shape. Uh, you have the ship uh, silhouette uh, off to the side here. You have the hit points uh, for the ship in this little uh, exaggerated uh, cross plus sign. You have the points cost for the ship. So when you're when you're building your fleets, the point cost uh, comes into basically if you're playing a 25 point game. That's how you determine how many ships you can buy out of the inventory on there. And then you have the defense. Uh, in, located in the little shield here. So that's the bases. The bases, like I said, are pretty simple and they break down into the three things. You have the twist and lock base, you have the twist and lock rod. These were both printed in FDM with us. Uh, we had about an 80, 85% uh, completion on the prints used in our Bamboo Labs P1P. Uh, it seems like uh, the issues that we ran into were the speed of the printer kind of uh, as the as the thing is printing kind of they kind of ruined it but most of the uh, rods came out great and we just printed these just stand as, uh, printed the rods just stand straight up with a uh, with a brim and it worked just fine from about 85 percent of there and then the ships we printed the ships in resin because they came pre-supported in resin and by the way talking about the pre-supports the uh, pre-supports were actually really robust, but also relatively easy to take off. So that, I think, says a lot of good things about Brave Sun. They took the care and attention to make sure that the ships were pre-supported well. You can look on the bottom here of the uh, Salem. Like, you can see the little, maybe not on this camera, but you could see uh, the kind of pre-supported divots. But the moment that the ship gets primed, all that stuff is going to go away. Uh, so I commend them. They did a really good job on the uh, pre-supporting of the models. Okay, so we went into all that on the bases. 
There are command actions that you can uh, use to spend some points, uh, command points that you get at the beginning of a battle. Let's go into uh, the other accoutrements. Uh, so let's talk about what's needed to play, what components are needed uh, to play. According to the manual, to prepare uh, for battle, admirals need the following gear. Eight six-sided dice, preferably in two different colors, four D6s in each color, a standard 12-inch ruler, at least two Brave Sun bases with approved ship stats and firing arcs, tokens to represent defense, damage, stun, corrosion, cloak, firing, activation, fighters, optional, and command points. Okay, so let's go, uh, go over that real quick. So we have a mess of tokens. So we have defense, both three-dimensional and two-dimensional, uh, and these are all included in the Brave Sun uh, Kickstarter. You have firing arcs. So this is basically how you tell your opponent, hey, I have used this firing arc already by putting this token next to the corresponding arc. And look, it matches, because it's an arc. Okay, so you have activation tokens. So you'll have these, uh, the uh, number of activation tokens for the number of ships that you have, showing what ships you've activated. You have the corrosion token, which some special ships can basically poison other ships uh, or put acid on them so they, so they break up. That's what that's all about. You have defense tokens. You'll want to print out a lot of these because uh, basically the ships that you use that are out of range, you'll probably, uh, in order to spend your uh, activations, uh, you'll want to uh, put defense on those just in case they come into fight before they're ready. Here is a stun token. The only token that I don't have is the cloak token. I'm not sure why I don't have that, because uh, I think I printed out everything. Uh, the cloak token basically looks like an eye, like a traditional, you know, kind of think of an almond with a circle in it, eye with an eye with a line crossed through it. Uh, a little uh, kind of uh, coin that shows who has the initiative for the round. You have command tokens. This is where you'll be able to say, oh, hey, I'm going to spend a command token on this thing to do this thing. Uh, and then what else? Uh, fighter tokens. All right. So that is the accoutrements for that. But let's talk about the maneuver tracks. The maneuver tracks come in two inch. Whoop, let's cast this aside. We have a two inch maneuver track. We have a three inch maneuver track and we have a four inch maneuver track. Now, when assembling these, uh, we printed the, this base flat against the, uh, against the print bed uh, on our FDM printer. We printed this one vertically because of this overhang here and then this central portion. Now you'll notice we, uh, we installed this correctly on the four but we didn't do it on the three or the two. The central portion, uh, it free spins, so we have glued it on there. So this is not coming apart. Now on here, you can see that there are notches, and those notches basically are a way for you to calculate how your turn is gonna be. This is similar to the way that they do it in Star Wars Armada, or Star Wars uh, X-Wing, or Legion, uh, and it's, basically works where I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna take my ship here. I've got the little notch on here, and I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna make a 30 degree turn, which would be the first turn right here. So if we're going straight, it'd be this one right here, and I'm gonna end up four right there. And that's exactly how you do it. All right, and then a 12 inch ruler because most of the ship ranges are around 12. So that is going through the whole other things that come in there as well as uh, the starships themselves. Uh, it, when you uh, back, or if you choose to back the Kickstarter, you'll get a rule book, you'll get a list of, uh, you'll get a PDF with uh, commands that you can do. Let me get out of this on my iPad. So uh, you get an activation slash actions uh, quick start guide. You have a command actions list saying what you can do like overdrive to, uh, uh, or strategic control or emergency repair or reinforce, all those do specific things and cost specific things. 
and we'll have something uh, show up on the screen here as we're recording that. But that is, that's it. Uh, so this is basically an overview of the Brave Sun Advent uh, uh, Kickstarter that they put out. Uh, we are going to have more of uh, this content coming out really soon uh, because uh, our relationship with Brave Sun and with Blitz Gaming uh, is basically that uh, we are, um, we want to support them because we believe in the product that they're offering. So we're going to uh, be basically promoting their Kickstarter, which is Monday, uh, February 20th. So if you're watching us, uh, watching this now, look for that. If you're watching it for the future, you should look to see if you can late pledge because as we show more content, we're going to have a tabletop simulator game, uh, with the creators of the game coming out really soon, you'll see that there's a compelling reason to take a look at the content and take a look at the game. Thank you very much for watching. We do appreciate all the uh, views that we get, the comments, uh, the shares that we get when people share our content. We, uh, we love all that. Um, we've seen our Etsy store grow by leaps and bounds, uh, and we greatly appreciate that. So thank you very much for watching Pulsefire Gaming. You have a good day.